All over British Columbia, there are thousands of huge clearings gouged out of the forest, left behind after each area has been logged. These massive clear cuts are one of the few man-made features on the face of the Earth visible to astronauts in orbit. Since the 1960s, the BC Forest Service has required the logging companies to replant these clear cuts, unless the area restocks itself naturally. Recently, more and more of the reforestation has been taken over from the Forest Service itself by independent contractors. Every time I meet somebody who's really messed up in their head, I often think, wow, what that person needs is to go tree planting. That'd be a really nice gift for them. Well, the, the best part about tree planting is that I only have to do it about two or three months of the year. And because I'm basically irresponsible and I don't have a lot of sort of financial commitments and debts, I'm able to earn enough money to sustain myself for the rest of the year. I really feel good about it. It's not so much the planting of the trees that I like. It's just like being out here. It's really good. year, tree planting crews assemble in Vancouver. Dirk Brinkman, the contractor on this crew, hears from the logging company that the snow has almost melted from the Nass Valley and starts the shopping. He tears about town buying fresh vegetables, fruit, a crew cab pickup truck, brown rice, nuts, honey, cheese, stovepipe, kerosene, nails, chainsaws, ropes, files, and axes. The crew load the crummies with four tons of food and gear. Okay, well, well, you got a paper in there, eh? I don't know. George, where's the paper? Here. Check that a minute. Then 25 of them crawl into the four stuffed trucks and bust out of the city, heading up Vancouver Island for the ferry to Prince Rupert. Riding in style, a 56 International and three vintage yellow crummies, discards from logging camp, guaranteed not to clock 50 miles without a breakdown. They reach Kelsey Bay in ample time to catch the Queen of Prince Rupert, a 24-hour ferry ride that'll take them 300 miles up the coast.
It was three years ago I was, I was a university student and uh, I retired out of the university scene and uh, I felt obliged to do some work. And we went logging in a place called Kinkham Inlet and I spent two months there setting chokers. And then I went, as I was there, one day this truck, a sort of a dump truck, gravel truck, drove by and I was at the time eating inside the cook shack. And I looked out and there were about 20 people clinging all over this truck hanging from side tonight, all dressed up in various sort of outfits. And I thought, good God, what's that? And the word got back through the camp that these were the tree planters. And I, I tree planted once before in Ontario, and I always said that one thing I would never do would be plant trees. And uh, when I saw these people go by, I thought, Christ, look at those poor buggers going there to plant trees. And I'd seen the side hills before from the logging and seen they're all burnt black and everything. And I thought, you know, I don't envy those guys at all. Still working north, they're a thousand miles from Vancouver now, leaving the pavement and electricity and the noises of civilization for the quiet of the Nass Valley and the noises of logging. Uh, yeah. okay, Traveling in style has its drawbacks. Every year they get softer, bringing bigger tents, thicker mattresses, more clothes, and more paraphernalia. Consequently, there are 14 boatloads of gear to pack across the river. On the way up here, people in the crew have been checking out new faces and new voices. Most of these people come from the Kootenai district in BC, some from Vancouver, and several wetbacks come from Ontario. Carpenters, weavers, ex-loggers, martial artists, itinerant musicians, an acrobat, and a boat builder. The group shifts and changes. These are mostly seasoned planters, some novices and some new people. People who'll be working, eating, and living together for the rest of the spring. They find their home, an island on the far bank of the Nass, now a few hundred acres of mud and stumps. <laughs> 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 it's good hard work, and that never hurt anybody. And uh, being thrown, a bunch of people being thrown together, and it's sort of an ad hoc situation where, where they have to live together, is usually really interesting, and much more so if there's hard work to be done. Up and down and down and down. There. How's that on that end? That's good. Oh, no. foot over here. Sorry. <coughs> Are you going to rope this or just leave it or what? Rope it. There's a rope right behind it, Derek. First up is the cook shack, the center of camp activity. Tree planters used to stay in logging camps and commute to the planting sites each day. Dirk was one of the first contractors to build a temporary camp right on the planting site. This way, the planters save time working and they can build a camp to fit their own needs and moods. The main planting site lies on the far shore of a side channel. Dirk fells an old cottonwood, one of the last trees on the island, to make a bridge to the other side. Bridge. 
When I cut this tree down here, I realized quite deeply why I plant trees so continuously without stopping, that is year after year. Tree planting is no big uh, truth because it's, it's, just in a, it's just as bad as, as logging, but at least it's a feeling act. It's a, fe it's a positive feeling act and uh, I can stay with it in a reasonable kind of way. Because of the river, they have to pack the trees to the planting site. Some pack 500 trees in their bags, others bring a box of 800. Most of the trees planted in BC are Sitka spruce or Douglas fir, the two most valuable West Coast softwoods. On this contract, they're planting Sitka spruce, used for its lightweight strength in aeroplane parts, canoe paddles, and guitar tops. And then when we're done, there's, a, there's this flat area, and that's over there at the, at the ends of these, each of these two side blocks. It definitely needs planting, and we're gonna go, and we'll do whatever spacing needs, <laughs> we, we need to do to make, put 100,000 trees in there. But first we gotta do this whole area. And that might mean we'll be planting six by six. It's a real good soil, and the Sitka spruce stand can grow that way. At least start that way. When we're done here, we go back to camp? Yeah, well, when you're done your trees, go back to camp and get some more. And then the next move that we'll do will be a narrower area from that big pine there to that one over there. That spruce, that, that spruce. The Forest Service requires that the trees be planted eight feet apart in mineral soil, reasonably straight with the roots tied in the ground. These rules sound simple, but often enough, eight feet from the last tree is the middle of a stump, a solid chunk of granite, or a black swamp hole. The ground can be rock hard or soggy. Sometimes you can't even find the ground for logging debris. The duff in places is several feet thick making it impossible to scrape down to mineral soil. They're planting amongst huge Sitka spruce stumps, three or four hundred years old. But the trees they're planting will be harvested in only 88 years. Oh, boy. Gee whiz. <laughs> okay, Bets. No, we're right, coming on the clubhouse stretch now to move into the lead. Bets takes some uh, screep there. Yeah, it takes them a while to get the tree out of the bag and into the hole, but then it'll take them on the outside corner and around the back house turn, yeah? 
when it's 25 cents. Three we have. And all moves up on the lead. That's leapfrogging. How's it going, Hank? Pretty good. Uh, looking at right now here, so there. How many do you think you'll get in today? I don't know. Hope it's it's hard to say right now. Hope there's so many trees about really, you know. The Wrigley Bill. We only got about 500 of these for now. Maybe the forestry brings some more later right? on. The trees come from BC Forest Service nurseries in boxes containing 400 to 1,000 trees each. Flying Bill Wrigley, the company forester, brought the trees up from Terrace. You plant a tree with jump off a lock and struggle against rocks. Swing the hole and dig the hole, swing the hole and dig the hole. Stand the tree and move along. Stand the tree and move along. Hoi, 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 do it with joy. Hoi, 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 with the toy. Hoi, 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 do it with joy. Hoi, 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 with the toy. Tree with jump off lock and struggle against rock. Swing the hole and dig the hole, swing the hole and dig the hole. Stand the tree and move along, stand the tree and move along. This is really a circus. We're not tree planters. <laughs> well, that's, that's pretty weird, even. Just scarf them down. <laughs> Nobody knows. Talk to the cooks, not cooks me. Oh, it won't take long. Mm -mm. They're running around, surfing in the background. Yes. Hey, you guys, there's a lot of room here. Look Get at them uniforms. Yes. Bring me some soup. Well, nobody's sitting well, here. We have no, hardly planted. Right. Well, this is all indigestible anyway. Oh, right. It's all raw food. Totally absolutely. We want to uh, share mashed potatoes and ham. You guys, yeah. this is your most macrobiotic meal. So wow. This is macrobiotic. Well, I have a milk product. The yin yang and beyond the cosmos. I yeah, can feel it washing over me. <laughs> well, the word's going to be that big. Well it's going to be good. I had better in mind uh, macrobiotic. Uh, Macro-psychotic meals in the night in the pyramid. <laughs> 453. You really thought this week, Luxury contract. Hey, hey, hey.
Thank you very much. I mean, oh, I'm so happy you made my day. Well, Two fifty is not enough. I hate him. These are really light, maybe. Are they? Yeah, really small. Look, I take three hundred. The traditional method of tree planting used by the Forest Service was a chain gang style. A line of workers standing eight feet apart and advancing under the direction of a foreman. Adopting a more efficient system, independent contractors developed a method allowing for much greater freedom of movement and speed. The first planters work up the edge of the logging cut and the others follow at their own speed, keeping eight feet between them and the next row of planted trees. The trees are then checked by the company forester. We make a circular plot 11.8 feet in diameter. Within this plot, uh, there's supposed to be a maximum of seven trees planted. Uh, we measure or tally the number of trees in the plot versus uh, the number of spots that are available for planting, you might say, one versus the other. And uh, when this is completed, we average it out and come up with a percentage. Uh, this will be 75% or 80% of the total area planted. Um, basically, that's it. It's, it's simply weighing the uh, plantable spots against the number of trees that were planted in the area. After checking the area, the ranger approves payment to the contractor on a per tree basis. Unsatisfactory planting results in either fines or in replanting the trees without extra payment. On this contract, Dirk is getting about 15 cents a tree. From that, he deducts his expenses, and the remainder is divided among the planters, in this case at 10 cents a tree. And when I plant trees, I, I feel when I plant them if they're dying or not. Like, you know, if they're... Sometimes I... Mm, I just plant a tree and I know it won't live, you know. And I know where to plant it because just they want to plant it eight by eight, you know, in spacings and so. So you really can, you know, you want to plant them right there where there is just, you know, a nice spot, but it's not in the 8 by 8 spacing or something. Or it's too close together or whatever. And it just really makes me, you know, the rules you have there, it's really too bad. I like to plan on, on you know, where a tree should live. If, and just most of the thing is just, it's burned over, it's dry and, and dusty and just, it's, you know, when the trees get covered with dust and so right away when you plant them, it's just, you know, they don't have a chance to survive. The neatest thing I thought about the tree planters was the fact that there was women doing this work. Because all the, the primary industries that I've been associated with, mining and logging and stuff, I've been, been doing that kind of stuff. I discovered that the, the, the celibacy of the whole situation and the total masculinity of it. And it was uh, sort of you're living a deprived life. And then here these people are working hard, and plus they have their mates, you know, and it makes so much more sense. And I, the amazing part was that the girls were planting as many trees as the guys. And I, I came as a chokerman, figuring I was pretty tough. And I came out there and, of course, discovered that the, the girls were much, much better at planting the trees than myself. And there was a, one case where a girl had given birth to a, a baby about a week before, and uh, she planted as many trees as me while nursing the kid and washing diapers. And this is hard to live down when you're large.
Are you taking that for the air pipe? Yeah. Then you can take the wood that's stacked by the stove because it's the wet stuff from over there. And I don't want to burn it in the stove because it's already going out. Okay. Like this yogurt? It tastes yeah, good. Uh, make a nice hot, hot drink. Like yeah, that's why it's in the jug. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. We don't eat all the time. So I think the yogurt's good. good. Better than last it time. Works. Hey, this is pretty organic. Yeah, I think. Annika, you're using my plate again. Oh, is this yours? Yeah, I oh, gave you one. Yeah, I put my candle in it and I've got to bring it down. <laughs> George, you need that. Educational swap. Oh, is that good? Really? Yogurt. Yeah. Yeah, yogurt like yogurt. I always take the mushrooms. <laughs> Drink your porridge. So you were out there last week for a couple hours, eh? <laughs> the working space of tree planting is a rhythmic one. Pacing yourself to work steadily and not hang up in the junk you have to plant through. Once you get the knack, even a moderate pace will get you a thousand trees a day. Last night, Colby and Gladys and I agreed that, that it was really special to work in a place that, that hadn't been burned over. It feels really good to, to plant in fresh dirt, and the mud is, is really nice, and, and the logs that have been felled and left in the slash are melting back into the earth. It's just, it's really beautiful to work in a place that's becoming springtime and it's still fresh. Somehow, like it's it's kind of hard on your body, you know. If you do it a lot, you know. If you do it for three months steady, you know, it's, you can wreck things, you know. People twist angles and stuff, and uh, sore backs and stuff, you know. I wouldn't want to do it, uh, you know, all my life, really, you know. 
<laughs> but, uh, I can do it still quite a few years, and we'll do it too, you know, so long as my energy, my energy keeps going, I will do it. <laughs> If, if again. the defending team is here, say yeah, the yeah. defenseman's here, okay, you be the opponent. All right, these guys, they got uniforms. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> get him! Oh, no! Are you okay? Oh, no! I can't take it off! The oh, <laughs> line is important to act, okay? <laughs> act really hurt whenever the ball... Oh. <laughs> One day, the Platters throw together an instant soccer team, a hasty pep talk, and they cruise down to New Ianch to challenge the Nishkas to a game. Like most coastal tribes, these Indians take their soccer seriously, and although their first string were away, their pickup team whacks the ragged Planters 15-0. pretty pooped in the second half, actually. All in all, like I said, I was pretty pleased. The managers are happy. We've had a phone call from New York. And, uh, I think we're about ready to break in the Northwest League here. I'd like to say this about that, John. Uh, that's on the other marvelous hand. job of uh, playing coach there. Yeah, well, it's Can all... you still talk? No. Uh, <laughs> the vocal cords uh, ran the whole... Very lousy. Oh. The thing that I really want to do in my life is make a living playing music. And... Uh, in fact, although, although planting's been a, a really good experience for me, the, the whole lifestyle, it's also screwed me up for, uh, for making a living playing music because I, I've now found a way that I can enjoy myself a great deal and make a good money and, uh, and be taken care of for two or three months and not have to, not have to worry about food and where I'm going to get fed and where I'm going to live. I'm, everything takes care of itself and the way we go and we're making money and at the end of it, that's, that's the, the other amazing thing to me is that at the end of it you come out and you're rich or uh, comparatively rich compared to what I'm used to. But I come back and, and there's uh, smoky bars and the whole uh, scene and I think, well, you know, can I get into this? You know, can, I, uh, can I go down to downtown onto the uh, into a bar and plug in my guitar and uh, and hack it, you know, because it's uh, well. For one thing, the money is just absurd by comparison. And for another thing, although I love music, it's, it's such a hard grind to to make a, a living at it. And, uh, and so, I consequently, I become a schizophrenic, and I spend half my time in the bush and half my time in the city.
going to hope to have an oyster farm started next year. This will be one of the first on the coast here. Hope to open a restaurant next year. I'm going to be teaching life drawing. I'm going to own a wood shop. But you see, in the course of all this, I'm going to be able to plant next year, which means taking two months out of out of life, you know, taking two months that nobody else in the world can afford. So when Cowell asked me the other day, I thought you were old enough to know better than to live this way. The answer is no. I'm not old enough to know better. This is a real weird tomato sauce, you know. It has vinegar and sugar in it. Or honey. But I says if I'm following a recipe, I better follow the recipe as much as I can. I decided to stop planting or to cook this year because of all the planting dreams I was having. So now I've traded them in for cooking dreams. Yeah. And I dream all the time about washing pots and stuff. I've planted everything. Um, planted gymnasium, linoleum floors, and <laughs> and concrete, and plant had planting battles where it's were on two sides, and you just got to plant so many trees, or else, or else you're dead, or something. I don't know. But actually, this year my planting dreams weren't so bad. I think maybe that's because I liked planting for the first time last year. Last year they weren't so bad, or this year they're not well, so bad? Well, I, I get them in the winter, not when I'm planting. Mm. When I'm planting, sometimes I'm just too tired. But then all winter I dream about it, because I know I'll be doing it again in the spring.
it's a, a total living experience or something. And it's in quite in contrast to other contracts I've been on, one of which was my first one. And it was a group of people, many of whom um, answered an ad and didn't know each other to start with, which is okay in itself. That um, the contractor was a bit crooked, and the way he taught us to plant was quite suspect. He just told us to dig a hole and get the tree in there and kick it down. So it it, it took a lot of people a few weeks to learn how to plant them properly. And um, the, the ground was so hard that I was planting about 400 a day for my first week. And we pretty well knew that the people that were planting eight and 900 were stashing some trees. And the contractor once or twice when he knew there were too many trees to fit into an area would on the way up the hill he would suggest to the more experienced planters that they get rid of trees as quickly as possible. And that kind of stuff does happen on some contracts. And it creates a, creates a real bad feeling among all the planters because many people just won't do that and some people will because it earns them more money and then there's a feeling of just distrust and and unease about the whole contract, which is really in contrast to this contract, to Dirk's, because there's there's just a trust among all the people that work for him that they don't stash trees, and so there's no question about it, and nobody worries about it, and it just doesn't happen that way. that have been severely slash burned where you've lost hundreds of years of accumulation of nutrients off, off the initial layer of the forest floor in a fire and it's all been released immediately and leached out of the soil within the first two weeks of rain and you've got almost nothing to begin with except a barren desert then it's just it's just a theater of the absurd to plant trees there because you know that hardly any of them are going to survive unless you know unless they're planted in in the shade or in a hole or something, because as soon as the soil temperature goes over 120 degrees, which it often does on a south slope in the summertime, then the tree dies. Hot rock? Get all over. Do you have enough rock? That's flint. Rock? Yeah. Rock? 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 You want those broken oh. flint or what? Yeah. Hot rock. Hot rock. What? Hey. Hey. Watch it on these pieces of that hot rock in the sand, right? 47 underneath for it. Oh, no, not that. No, it's yeah. good as well. Close the door. Can you close the door better? Yeah. Hey, Doug, you want to get that door good? Shut the door! The heat's all going out! Everybody in! Woo-hoo! Woo! Yeah, woo! Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! Yeah! Start 
Go ahead, go. Hey, go. Drive that diving board faster. <laughs> there you go. Faster. Run, run, run. Run, run, run. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, he's on your own water. Oh, you're on fire. The best planting ground happens to be right under the camp. And on the last day, the planters line up across the island and run a 200 tree race. Chili already. <laughs> wow. How does it feel, Hank? Oh, it's lovely. Uh, this is delicious. You don't wear water for a change. <laughs> kind of chilly, though, in a way. You know, it's like cooling down already. <laughs> oh, dirty boy. Look at his water. <laughs> See this <his> water? <laughs> My head was itching like crazy, you know. <laughs> Ooh. All clean a bit, sort of, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> you may be low, you may be rich, child, you may be slow, <laughs> but when the Lord gets ready, you got to go. leave the Nass Valley. 160,000 trees down and 700,000 more to go around the province. Plastic Village explodes and they're on the road again.
It's a strange group, a combination of cooperation and competition, sharing the work, fighting over the good planting ground, and dividing up the money. Just long-haired rednecks, who for the time being have found a new approach to work. You like this yogurt? It tastes yeah, good. Uh, Make a nice hot, hot, hot drink. Yeah, that's why it's in the jug. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. We don't eat all the time. I think the yogurt's good. Better than last time. 
Hey, this is pretty organic. Yeah, I think. Annika, you're using my plate again. Oh, is this yours? Yeah, I oh. gave you one. Yeah, I put my candle in it and I've got to bring it back. <laughs> George, you gonna eat that? Educational slop. Oh, is that really? Yogurt? Yeah. Yeah, yogurt my yogurt. I always take too much from school. <laughs> Drink your porridge. <laughs> the working space of tree planting is a rhythmic one. Pacing yourself to work steadily and not hang up in the junk you have to plant through. Once you get the knack, even a moderate pace will get you a thousand trees a day. Last night, Colby and Gladys and I agreed that, that it was really special to work in a place that, that hadn't been burned over. It feels really good to to plant the fresh dirt and the mud is, is really nice and, and the logs that have been felled and left in the slash are melting back into the earth. It's just it's really beautiful to work in a place that's becoming springtime and it's still fresh. Somehow, like it's, it's kind of hard on your body, you know, if you do it a lot, you know, if you do it for three months steady, you know, it's, you can wreck things, you know, people twist angles and stuff, and, uh, short backs and stuff, you know. I wouldn't want to do it, uh, you know, all my life, really, you know. <laughs> but, uh, I can do it still quite a few years, and we'll do it too, you know, so long as my energy, my energy keeps going, I will do it. <laughs> Expand, if expand if again. the defending team is here, say yeah. the no. defenseman is here, okay, you be the opponent. All right, these guys, they got uniforms. Okay. <laughs> uh, <coughs> oh, Jesus! Oh, God! Oh. Are you okay? Oh, God! I can't take it off, Jesus! Hold on, it's important to act, okay? <laughs> act really hurt whenever the ball goes. Oh, God! One day, the planters throw together an instant soccer team, a hasty pep talk, and they cruise down to New Ianch to challenge the Nishkas to a game. Like most coastal tribes, these Indians take their soccer seriously, and although their first string were away, their pickup team whacks the ragged planters 15-0.
I thought we were all pretty pooped in the second half, actually. <laughs> Oh, no, like I said, I was pretty pleased. The managers are happy. We've had a phone call from New York. And, uh, I think we're about ready to break in the Northwest League here. I'd like to say this about that, John. Uh, that's a marvelous hand. job of uh, playing coach there. Yeah, well, it's Can all... Can you still talk? No. Uh, <laughs> the vocal cords ran the whole... Very lousy. Oh. The thing that I really want to do in my life is make a living playing music. And, uh, in fact, although, although planting's been a a really good experience for me, the, the whole lifestyle. It's also screwed me up for, uh, for making a living playing music because I, I've now found a way that I can enjoy myself a great deal and make a good money and, uh, and be taken care of for two or three months and not have to, not have to worry about food and where I'm going to get fed and where I'm going to live. I'm, everything takes care of itself and the way we go. And, we're making money, and at the end of it, that's that's the the other amazing thing to me is that at the end of it, you come out and you're rich or uh, comparatively rich compared to what I'm used to. But I come back, and and there's the uh, smoky bars and the whole uh, scene, and I think, well, you know, can I get into this? You know, can I uh, can I go down to downtown into the uh, into a bar and plug in my guitar and uh, and hack it? You know, because it's uh, well, for one thing, the money is just absurd by comparison. And for another thing, although I love music, it's, it's such a hard grind to, to make a, a living at it. And, uh, and so, I consequently, I become a schizophrenic, and I spend half my time in the bush and half my time in the city. OK, time and see. Oyster Farm started next year. This will be one of the first on the coast here. Hope to open a restaurant next year. I'm going to be teaching life drawing. I'm going to own a wood shop. But you see, in the course of all this, I'm going to be able to plant next year, which means taking two months out of out of life. You know, taking two months that nobody else in the world can afford. So when Cowell asked me the other day, I thought you were old enough to know better than to live this way. The answer is no. I'm not old enough to know better. It's a real weird tomato sauce, you know. It has vinegar and sugar in it. Or honey. But I says if I'm following a recipe, I better follow the recipe. As much as I can. I decided to stop planting or to cook this year because of all the planting dreams I was having. So now I've traded them in for cooking dreams. Yeah. I dream all the time about washing pots and stuff. I've planted everything. Um, planted gymnasium, linoleum floors and <laughs> and concrete and plant had planting battles where it's were on two sides and you just gotta plant so many trees or else or else you're dead or something, I don't know. But actually this year my planting dreams weren't so bad. 
I think maybe that's because I like planning for the first time last year. Last year they weren't so bad, or this year they're not well, so bad? Well, I, I get them in the winter, not when I'm planting. Mm. When I'm planting, sometimes I'm just too tired. But then all winter I dream about it, because I know I'll be doing it again in the spring. total living experience or something. And it's in quite in contrast to other contracts I've been on, one of which was my first one. And it was a group of people, many of whom um, answered an ad and didn't know each other to start with, which is okay in itself. But um, the contractor was a bit crooked the way he taught us to plant was quite suspect. He just told us to dig a hole and get the tree in there and kick it down. So it, it, it took a lot of people a few weeks to learn how to plant them properly. And um, yeah, the ground was so hard that I was planting about 400 a day for my first week. And we pretty well knew that the people that were planting eight and 900 were stashing some trees and the contractor once or twice when he knew there were too many trees to fit into an area, would on the way up the hill, he would suggest to the more experienced planters that they get rid of trees as quickly as possible. And that kind of stuff does happen on some contracts. And it creates a, creates a real bad feeling among all the planters because many people just won't do that and some people will because it earns them more money. And then there's a feeling of just distrust and and unease about the whole contract, which is really in contrast to this contract, 
to Dirks because there's there's just a trust among all the people that work for him that they don't stash trees and so there's no question about it and nobody worries about it and it just doesn't happen that way. that have been severely slash burned where you've lost hundreds of years of accumulation of nutrients off, off the initial layer of the forest floor in a fire and it's all been released immediately and leached out of the soil within the first two weeks of rain and you've got almost nothing to begin with except a barren desert then it's just, it's just a theater of the absurd to plant trees there because you know that hardly any of them are going to survive unless, you know, unless they're planted in in the shade or in a hole or something, because as soon as the soil temperature goes over 120 degrees, which it often does on a south slope in the summertime, then the tree dies. Hot rock? Do you have enough rock? That's what? Rock? 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 You want those rocks to plant or what? Yeah. Hot rock. Hot rock. What? Hey! Watch it on these pieces of that hot rock in the sand, right? 47 underneath. Oh, no, not that. No, it's good as well. Close the door. Can you close the door better? Yeah. Hey, Doug, you want to get that door good? Shut the door! The heat's all going out! Everybody in! Woo! 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 I do a lot of sanding and stuff. Yeah, around about August. It starts to start sanding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> go, Hank, go! Drive that diving board faster! <laughs> there you go! Faster! Run, run, run! Run, run, run! Hey, hey, hey! hey. 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 The best planting ground happens to be right under the camp, and on the last day, the planters line up across the island and run a 200-tree race. Another 
Simon. Getting chilly already. <laughs> How does it feel, Hank? Oh, it's lovely. Uh, this is delightful. You don't wear a water for a change. <laughs> kind of chilly, though, in a way. You know? It's cooling down already. <laughs> oh, dirty boy. Look at his water. <laughs> See his water? <laughs> Imagine. Poo. My head was itching like crazy, you know? <laughs> Poo. All clean a bit, sort of, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> You may be low, big apple on You may be rich, child. You may be slow. <laughs> but when the Lord gets ready, you got to go. leave the Nass Valley. 160,000 trees down and 700,000 more to go around the province. Plastic Village explodes and they're on the road again. combination of cooperation and competition, sharing the work, fighting over the good planting ground, and dividing up the money. <laughs> For those of you who uh, have suffered through the long version of the tree planting film, I'm the guy on the uh, purple sweater sitting in the bug infested glade with this actual chapeau, this, this hat. I'm, I'm pretty sure I wore that during the interview. But you see, then I had uh, a beard and it was 26, 28. I can't remember, it was a long time ago. Many years. But the, uh, the good thing is I got my wish. I can't remember exactly what I said, but I know that at the time I was talking about the absurdity of my income as a musician versus my income as a tree planter and how I couldn't possibly survive on my musician income. And uh, lo and behold, I have, I did. I'd read about Doug and the Slugs in the Georgia Strait and thought, hmm, interesting, yeah. Well, these guys seem to be having fun. And uh, so they phoned, I said, Sure, I'll put my Fender Rhodes in the truck and bring it to the city. So I went. Uh, we had a couple days rehearsal before a gig, and 
John Burton said, okay, Cy, this is it. You're quitting tree planting, you're selling your house, you're moving to Vancouver, we're going straight to the top. And we've gone on to have three kids who are now all grown up, Aaron, Allie, and Levon. And Pauline and I survived not only tree planting, but uh, rock and roll. We're still here. I grew up in a very uh, close-knit family. We were, we all seemed to like each other growing up, and so moving when we all left home to to have a large number of us working together on the same contract. I think we, I always chose to be around my brothers, to work with my brothers, and um, I, I, we still, even though we're all in our 50s, approaching 50 and over, we still have a lot of communication with each other. And tree planting was where I first heard about my future-to-be husband, Simon Kendall, but that is 30 years ago now, and certainly um, we are one of quite a number of long-term relationships that were either in their infancy during the Do It With Joy film or that developed shortly after that. And our son Levon has become a basketball player and has moved to Pittsburgh and we've bought a house there for him to be in. Well, the girls, my, our two daughters, have been out tree planting. They've both been out cooking. They've been out as tree planters. And I've just been very impressed with how they've taken to it, like ducks to water. And I love staying here in the city and hearing their stories, the hardships, the bears, the trucks stuck in the mud, all this stuff. I think it's all incredible, great learning experience. And I'm really glad that I'm not out there doing it anymore myself. I thought I would be a naturopathic physician. That's actually what I was studying uh, at the, I was doing pre-med uh, at SFU, and Do It With Joy was, was filmed after my term uh, in, in SFU that spring. I never imagined that I would be uh, involved in the tree planting business for the, for the 25 years after that film was taken. Um, <clears throat> I, I uh, also have a passion for the environment that I got out of being in the tree planting sites and wilderness around BC. A couple years before the film, I'd taken the decision that the point that I was going to take a stand at in my life was tree planting. I'm just going to do one thing for the rest of my life, tree planting, and find whatever, wherever that leads as a path. I have been untangling the perspective. It's an occupational point. It's not a spiritual point. It's simply what I've chosen to do and think through and relate to the world from that point. It was great to have the film celebrate that process for me, and it has been propelling in that sense because very visible. It's become a very visible preoccupation, and it's a. And now with climate change, it's an utterly critical preoccupation. Uh, we looked at projects that were funded by international agencies and we said something has to be done that's entrepreneurially driven, creates its own momentum, can reverse deforestation, creates employment, has the social impact for, for the communities, can involve the local people. It was a big adventure going from uh, corporate and family life into being a cabinet minister. It was uh, lots of learning and I love learning. And I also was able to do some things that I'm, I'm very proud of. It's been incredibly rich for, the, for Baba Eric and Don to be part of this uh, organization and family business and uh, tribal business. Uh, there was, uh, it was in their lives what their parents did and why. They were in the camps and uh, Don and Eric are in tree planting camps as crew bosses today. The, in the fantasy from my youth, I guess, I uh, always wanted to like the fantasize a part of a cowboy. So um, somehow I figured Canada was a good, good place to do that. Like, you know. To be long enough to get that far, mostly money-wise, to get my own small ranch happening. And uh, so I went tree planting.
for many years uh, to get enough money to go buy this farm. Like, you know. So then Nick came to me like one day. You know, you, you know, you, you get to know, you're sort of joking around quite a bit. You get to know me quite a bit. Then he said, uh, you know, y y why don't you do a song? Because I guess I was playing harmonica a bit here and there. So I made up the, the song "Do It With Joy." About five minutes before, I, made, like, I sat down by myself on the beach for a minute and we started rhyming the song together. Like, uh, I think it was, it was pre-84. I was actually running, I was a supervisor for Brinkman at that time, uh, running contracts. And uh, so I met Manon, she was doing uh, the bookkeeping and uh, accounting work for Brinkman Associates. That's where I met her. And I think the main reason why how we really connected was because she said she was interested in horses too. The first time I, I came to this place, I came from Nelson, right? When I came right in the valley, where the valley opens up here, just over the bridge. And then I had a feeling, yeah, that's it. That's, it. that's what I'm looking for. Like, you know, like, What I'm doing now is like a, I'm a hay salesman. I'm delivering hay all over the Kootenays. So I do a lot of lifting, heavy bales. Let's live the life of the pioneer man. Let's live the life of the pioneer man. Buy yourself a herd of cows. Buy yourself a herd of cows. Buy yourself a wagon and team. Buy yourself a wagon and team. Load of the wagon with wife and kids. Load of the wagon with dogs and pigs. Load of the wagon with chickens and honkies. A barrel of water and bags of grain. A barrel of water and bags of grain. They had a dream that had to be seen. They had a dream they had to explore. But, but, nature. But, it's, it's but, good nature. Energy to, uh, nature. I like growing hay, even I was a little kid in Holland already, so it's, that's why I still do it, I guess. It's, <laughs> again, it's a child fantasy. And uh, we've been friends since I came here to Canada, uh, before that, even in Holland, where we came from. And I followed Hank, you know, somehow his life and my life are kind of intertwined. I met Dirk on the ferry in uh, 1974, 74 in the fall. He lived in Riendel and uh, it looked like he looked like a neat guy, so I got to talk to him. So I said, what are you doing for a living? Because he looked, he had a big bushy beard and scraggly hair and I look kind of similar in those days. He said, you know, what are you doing for a living? Because I was trying to scrape by. Why well, we do tree planting? And I said, wow, that sounds interesting after he talked to me. And and I was actually uh, still a planter at that time. And she, she said, well, I'll join you guys. We've got time for a change. And, and then we, we met and we stayed together. I don't know. My kids are all planting, we're planting. I'm waiting for, I'm, I'm, I thought I was gonna retire when my great, when my grandkids were planting, but I can't wait that long. <laughs> so just being born, so I can't do it another 25 years. But. At Dirk and, the, and all the family, they became kind of family too. And it's been, uh, yeah, I've known George, say forever. Since we stayed in touch. Uh, I planted trees for 12 years. Um, that was plenty at that point. I think I was close to a million trees by the time I stopped planting trees and started in the sawmill business. And uh, one of the great things about planting was actually uh, my sister Pauline uh, orchestrating a, a young lady to come work on the same crew that I was on because she figured it would be the perfect wife for me. And it actually worked out great. And uh, we bought her supper on our anniversary just about every year since. So. Uh, that's been, uh, and we met tree planting, and it was uh, love at first sight. Where you were with, I was with you guys, and you said, "Oh, George just happens to be in the area, and I think we'll meet him at in Prince George if we're lucky. You should hang around." You fell in love right away, Irene? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
It was in you 70s. You fell in love right away. Well, did you? He didn't tell George me that. George did it. Eh? Oh, I knew right First away. No, he did. First sight, George? Uh, 23 years. 24. 24. Main reason I quit planning is well, I had a young family and it was no good to be away a month at a time or two months at a time and so uh, I just had to find work here in the valley and where I lived at the time so uh, yeah this was a natural progression kind of to go into. I was into lumber already a little bit at that time. So. I built my business around buying what other people don't want to work with and uh, it's actually worked out quite successfully because in the in this kind of wood if you saw it carefully and look for the right clients for the product it's there's some really amazing stuff in here as you can see with this log it has many features that a guy could work with and and uh, get the most value out of kids we have three girls yeah. what are they up to uh one of them was tree planting for a little while but right now they're all over the world one's in uh, the oldest camellia is in australia and the two youngest jenny and holly are just went to england and they're touring around there checking it out and so we're uh empty nest at this point. Four and a half more years I want to sell this business and then I'm gonna go do something else. Not sure yet what I'm gonna do but uh, maybe consulting work and, and it'll still be lumber orientated and I'm not gonna completely retire and sit on a beach but hopefully play some more golf that'll be fun. We're going to stop in Rossland because that's where Glada is living these days, part-time. And I ended up planting trees over an 18-year period, uh, 16 full spring field seasons and three fall seasons. And it was the uh, 15th of June 1990 and I had an incredible experience of hearing the great ancient forest across the valley engaged in a tumultuous hymn of praise to the creator and joy in creation. And I heard the great song of the planetary forest change that day from this hymn of joy and praise to a litany of sorrow begging for mercy and as close as my cognitive mind could translate the forest said O oh, noble and worthy exploiters and conquerors, have mercy. Do not end our singing, which allows your own life here. And since that day, my life has been pretty much totally devoted to spreading the message of the singing forest that is begging us for mercy. And John's on crutches, so I'm not sure he's going to be jumping up out to meet us. We're going to have Working uh, up in Kink and Menlat, uh, in fact, where you know, was when I first got started uh, tree planting later on. Um, I, I looked at the sites and said to myself, I thought, Christ, look at those poor buggers going there to plant trees. And I'd seen the side hills before from the logging, and seen they're all burnt black and everything. And I thought, you know, I don't envy those guys at all. I thought I'd sworn it off, but uh, evidently I didn't, and uh, was tra attracted in, and hence wound up in the in the original film. I think there is something unique about the early days of tree planting, whatever. It was, in a sense, um, represented s some essence of the 70s, although it was a, a unique expression and that it, 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 it expressed itself primarily in work. So we might have just been uh, a bunch of Calvinists who had cleverly disguised ourselves as hippies and, as a result, did all this constructive work. And part of that appealed to me, and I think that's informed my, my approach. Uh, you know, I, the frontier aspect of it, it was very exciting to be an industry that was inventing itself. And interestingly, many of the skills I picked up, uh, you know, and, and literally the trucks and chainsaws, have made it so that I'm very, um, in, in, in a way, uh, gifted in the sense that I've had practical experience dealing with the practicalities of living in the country. So I can cut my own wood 
and built a large part of my own house. Uh, that's not bad for a kid from the suburbs, you know. I mean, so what we did here, this whole place was all wooded. And so my job was to sit in a big dodge and have my baby at my best and winch up the logs that John was falling down over there. And that's how we built our house. So it's one of the skills I learned from tree planting, actually. And I, uh, I learned a lot of problem solving there because you have to do things with nothing because you're in the middle of nowhere. So you have to learn how to solve problems really quickly with the things that you see around you. So I have learned that through the years. Um, I think we are having fun today. No, uh, we, so after having raised the kids, we were surprised to find that we still like each other. So yeah. that's been an, uh, that's really helped me think over yeah. the long term. I guess that's pretty good. Yeah. That's good. We can do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it started out as a 45 foot trailer with a couple of additions and uh, I've been here about nine years now and I'm kind of trying to blow it into a house as I can and, and as I can finagle the wood from George to build it out of it. I, yeah, I, I watched a friend of mine do stained glass and he had a studio set up in his bus and I played a little bit of, he showed me the basics of the mechanics of it and then I kind of took, just took it from there, you know, uh, a fella uh, in the next village and uh, he wanted, he didn't really know what he wanted but he wanted a set of angels in, in, a, in his foyer window and uh, by the time I got it three quarters of the way built with the, the four angels and the wings and all that in the background and he was put in jail for uh, being a pedophile so I decided he didn't really deserve it so and then George seen it and with Irene and his three girls he decided that he should have the four angels so that's pretty neat so he gave me a down payment on it and then I finished it and sold it to him. Almost ten years ago now that I started in it I've done about uh, 10 or 11 big pieces, you know, over three and four square feet. And, uh, and uh, three of those are, are major big ones. My daughters come up on the weekends. They're 12 and a half years old now, so, yeah. Got a trampoline up in the backyard for them to bounce around on, and we're busy building their playhouse as we can. But, yeah, we're having fun. It's Probably one of the few people in that uh, that original contract uh, that we did the movie on um, that's still in the tree planting business. There's of course Dirk, but uh, I also stuck with silviculture and and in fact that very year is the year I started doing my own contracting and since then I've been contracting till now and it's afforded us a, a really good lifestyle. The fact that we've been involved in contracting ourselves all these years has really given our children and the children of many of our generation that same foundation of learning how to work at a young age and learning how to play <laughs> at a you know throughout their lives like to bring the joy of work into their lives is a really solid thing well this is a this was my 50th uh, birthday present from my wife and it was built by a tree planter that uh, works with us, that has worked with us in the past. And uh, it's, a, it's a monument to the hardworking people in this industry. And it's located in such a way that I can see it from my office. When, when I'm sitting in my office, I'm looking out at this fellow and this is the man, this is the, these are the people that make my life the way it is. It's, it made it possible. We have two children and they're 21 and 24. Our son is currently um, going to university in the States on a golf scholarship and wildland firefighting in the summer. And our daughter is a ski guide and does various work in the mountains and in the bush and works with our company sometimes too in the summer. We got to revisit Port Eliza this summer. That's the first contract that I ever went on. Leo dragged me off to the west coast of Vancouver Island. <laughs> And it was just, it looked like the moon. 
where we planted. So we got to go back there this summer, 30 years later, and found the place where we planted. We found the trees and they were... They were 60 centimeters large. They were, they were big trees and, and 20 meters tall. They were uh, full-size trees and in the interior here they would be logging them in some places. They're, they were plenty big enough to make boards with. And it was uh, quite, uh, quite wonderful to see that uh, what we'd done was uh, coming to fruit. And it was shocking to realize that we were in that, that realm where we could talk about 30 years ago. That is shocking. It's still shocking to me. I thought only old people talked about that. <laughs> we are old. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. We're getting well, there. <laughs> we're getting there. Relative. Relative. my breathing this is what i'm repeating i chant this to replenish like a sandwich when you're famished under bandages my hand is badly damaged but i manage by the hand of rip to brandish my shovel as i plan this great expense for spanish where the planet has been granted trees get slammed into the slanted land with frantic speed i dance with an enhanced sense of romantic and i can't get disenchanted I'm dragging my feet to get speed, I shift gears I fiercely lift my knees and my fatigue disappears My sweat drips swiftly, my lips bleed and get smeared Which I lick quickly, cause it's the sea mixed with tears Clocks tick six years as I walk between trees And the slash is deep with distracting green leaves My dreams lead and I seem to be fast asleep I'm trapped in a deep trance but I climb out to sleep I stand half deceased at the end of my last grief When my hand slaps the tree in the sand, that's just sweet And I actually leave past belief, the feats I've had to pull Wrap the knees, rags, the wool, tree bags full of like a black sheep that's track meat speed compatible to pass me, you have to be released by a catapult And every word that I speak is autobiographical So follow my path, it's all flagged with red tape And I shed weight with each microsite, I impregnate My shredded legs keep me upright to levitate Up the block every day, but the rocks never break I've got to measure space, do whatever it takes Some nights I lie in bed awake and shiver and shake But I never let a late night get in the way Cause every second I waste is like instead of my pay So when I've got to separate my head and escape From all the effort it takes, I just rap to meditate I chant this to replenish like a sandwich when you famished Under bandages my hand is Badly damaged but I manage By the hand of rip to brandish My shovel as I plan this Great expense for Spanish Where the planet has been granted Trees get slammed into the slanted Land with frantic speed I dance with An enhanced sense of romantic And I can't get disenchanted You find a tree with jump over lock on Shuffle guns rock You find a tree with jump over lock on Shuffle guns rock 